Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio, show 159. Today's show, we're coming from River Road Studios in Oregon. This show is sponsored by... Get Healthy Now with Candace, connecting people with plants to transform lives. Candace is now accepting new clients, so whether you're near or far, feel free to give her a call. Check it out at gethealthynowwithcandace.com. Hunter Creation. Did you ever want a business card, a banner, a brochure? you don't know where to go and you can go to Vistaprint and have them do their templates but everybody else has those templates talk to Hunter Creation they can help you out they can make a customized business card banner brochure whatever you need and get it printed for you and drop shit to you anywhere in the country contact them at huntercreation.com and Occupy Medical we are located in our brand new location 1717 Centennial Boulevard in Springfield Oregon suites 4 and 7 we are a 501c3 Integrated Health Clinic, and you can check us out at occupy-medical.org. All right, Ace High Heat Graphics. If you would like to get shirts with your logo on it or a cool idea for your organization to raise money, they're the perfect outlet for that. Contact them at sales at Ace High Heat Graphics for more information. And if you would like to find out some help for your chronic condition or something to work on for a uh, long care health plan, then go to Sierra Lupe Consulting. My email is Sierra Lupe Herbal Consulting at gmail.com. All right. And as we've been talking about, Christmas is right around the corner. The holidays are here and you're looking for that perfect gift. Um, maybe you want to fill up somebody's Kindle. You can get an Amazon gift card. You can get that for them. Or you can want to fill up your own Kindle. Go to Amazon.com and search in for the Practical Herbalist Press. You'll see all of our folios there. Everything from the zombie herbalism for the zombie apocalypse, the pocket herbal, to medicinal marijuana. There's some really cool folios that have been written, well-researched, and highly detailed for, um, for herbal information. So those candles are like an electronic herbal Christmas stocking. They yes, are. They are. They are. They are. Mm. They are. All right, so we had Jeff Chilton in the studio last week, and we talked about mushrooms and mycelium, and it was really interesting to learn how much um, false product there is. So with today's show, I think uh, Candice and Sue and I will all talk mushrooms. So now here are your hosts, Candice Hunter and Sue Sierra Lupe. I'm Candice Hunter. And I'm Sue Sierra Lupe. And, and welcome, welcome to Real Herbalism, Herbalism Radio. Radio. Yes, sorry. Off we go to the mushroom races. Oh, yeah. I love mushroom season. Yes. Which it happily is It right is now. mushroom season. Yes. yes. Man, Pacific Northwest is, I think, pretty much known for our mushrooms. We have an awful lot of them available. Yep. Oregon okay. has 5,800 varieties. That, at least, that, yeah. That are here. You betcha that right. are Most of those are probably not medicinal, though. Right. Most A of those lot of those are pretty poisonous, so Au be contraire. careful. Au contraire. I say, I in French, I say... You you find out about it and you figure out how to use it. I would say well, all. but be careful with the poisonous ones. Right, that's what I'm saying. Is Just there's the, an awful maybe, lot of poisonous ones. There are so a be lot careful. of poisonous ones, but, you, but there's it, some really good ones. Yep, some really good medicinal ones. Yeah, if it has a little skull on it, then don't eat it. But yeah, yeah. but if it looks like an angel, consider it, it may like be a angel. death angel. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, don't do if that. it's a white, beautiful mushroom. And he just so says, behind, calling you know, to you, saying, needles. please bring me You're home. living in anime world. That's the one you don't bring home because yeah. I do it all Five my years. Season. Five years in a row. He brought that one the home. And five years in a row, I was like, dude, that's a death angel. He's like, I don't know. I'm going to identify him. I'm going to know. I'm like, it's a death angel. And he looks, comes at me. Oh, look, honey, I it identified it. It's a death angel. I'm like, I know. It's a death <laughs> angel. But that's good. It's leave a it, learning curve. Leave it in the forest. That's a learning I, curve that doesn't require actual death. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Thankfully, there have been no deaths yeah. in our family Knock on wood. or amongst our friends due to mushroom poisoning mm -hmm. coming from our house, at least. Right. That's very true. <laughs> right. I think that um, I found it interesting that he said that there was only, what, 10, 12 species that can be propagated for commercial use. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Currently. Yep. It blows yeah. me away how many, you know, how many different varieties of fungi are out there yeah and only you can that we only propagate 10 or 15 or 10 12 well we're yeah. still learning how to propagate some of these herbs too and black coash is still a huge struggle to grow commercially most of the time it's wildcrafted right and up to i don't know 20 years ago i think it was 20 25 years ago we didn't have 
a way viably to grow Oregon, uh, or sorry, um, Golden Seal commercially. Right. It yeah. was all wildcrafted too until a guy that lives in Salem, Oregon, uh, from our fine state of Oregon, figured out how to grow it and grow it organically. And now, you know, now all these people are doing it. So we're just, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a new industry. Yeah. Sure. But I, well, I, like I, said, I was just so surprised, you know, maybe there was, I, I just, it just seemed like it would be an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah. then again, when you think about when you go out mushrooming, the recipe of location, every time right. we're, yeah. we're looking, we're looking for specific things and mm -hmm. specific strata conditions and all, all these right. conditions that have to come together for, you know, the mushroom to appear. And how many times have we gone to an area and go, this place should be loaded with chanterelles right. and there's not a chanterelle to find. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in another place, you're like, why is there one on the side of the road here? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So what are you doing here? Yeah, I could see where that would be the, the challenge part is that I, they yeah, having figuring that, right. that out. They're still learning. They're just yeah. still yeah. learning. Yeah. But for the ones that we do know, the ones that we do yeah. know, my favorite, all time favorite is turkey tail. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a common one. It grows on almost every continent in the world. Sure. And yeah. almost every, it's one of those, you know, it's a immunomodulator, so it's good for a whole bunch of different kinds of things that are tricky to deal with in other ways. But it's a beautiful little mushroom, and if you look on deciduous wood, you're probably going to find it. Yeah. Because that's its preferred place. And I, I just made some tincture nice. of it. I was really excited, and I did it a slightly different way than I was taught. I put it in my slow cooker, my tiny. Nice. Yes. You know how they have the sauce slow cookers? The little yeah, the little the potpourri pot. Is the that what it is? Yes. The potpourri it's pot. The potpourri pot. Oh. It's like two. Yeah, it's like two cups. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. really it's a really small, five hundred mil or something like that. Yep. Because I was just doing a small yeah. batch to see if I yeah. could. So I cooked it up in there for like a day or two until it got nice and dark. Yeah. And then that's when I added the alcohol to it. Nice. Nice. So that was how I did my first shiitake tincture. I did it in a larger batch because I had a lot of shiitake dried mushrooms. So it was easy to mm -hmm. like, okay. So I used a, I think it was a three quart, not the giant slow cooker, but like yeah. the, the sort of like the smaller, yeah, small size family one. size. Right. Candace <laughs> doesn't, doesn't do anything small to try it. She just does it. Yeah, it's a big size. <laughs> well, Never I had it. Yeah. Needs oil to yeah. make. 500 mil to <laughs> how can you not, But how are you going to not love a shiitake mushroom tincture? It's going to taste absolutely delicious, mm -hmm. and it's going to be good for you. It's a guarantee, right? right? That's so true. that's an easy one to go yeah. larger scale. But that was how I did it the first time was I, I did it that way and then added alcohol just to essentially as Take a preserving. Out. Yeah, because yeah. some of the constituents that – I mean, we're still learning. There are tons yeah. of constituents in these plants, and – we learn about them one at a time and figure out, well, this constituent does this. And then, oh, and there's another one in there. And that does this. And right. So it's 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 a constant learning curve. And the more you learn about the other ones, then you go, oh, wait. But that means that the PSK in turkey tail actually does this. You know, right. So it just keeps going. Yeah. I, I, I liked how Jeff was saying um, he had some... I was thinking, oh, I think it was tincture. It was like mushroom capsule, and yeah. it tasting that it was really bland, and it was rishi and rishi is not supposed to be bland no, at all. It shouldn't be, yeah. And then comparing it to the one that he likes, which is actually from the mushroom fruit, mm -hmm. and tasting that, and it's just oh god, awful bitter. Yeah. So I had some commercially made, and I'm not going to say what the name of the the place that made it was Turkey Tail, and I opened up the little bottle, little one ounce bottle of it. And it was very pale. Mm. Very, very, very That's not pale. a really good sign. And I tasted it, yeah. and there wasn't much to the flavor. Yeah. Whereas just taking that tea that I had, or decoction that I had in that slow cooker, I hadn't even added the alcohol to it. That yeah. stuff was dark. It was like yeah. dark coffee brown. Right. And I haven't even extracted, you know, added the alcohol right. to extract it. So that's yeah. already, to me, you can taste these, some of the constituents you can taste. Yeah. So yeah. I'm confused. I mean, you had the liquid mm -hmm. and it's brown. Right. It's a strong decoction. Great. Mm -hmm. Like a soup. So yeah, yeah. like a soup. Yeah. You just add the alcohol to that? Yeah, add the alcohol to that. Yep. Before, so you did you add before, before or after you strained it? Did you strain it and then I add alcohol? I didn't strain it at all. Okay. So you nope. added the alcohol and then stuck it. 
And All then I just put it in another container yeah. and added some alcohol to to uh, get some of the properties that I got the water soluble ones, like mm-hmm. the PSK. Okay. Yeah. The uh, protein bound ones. And now I'm getting the alcohol or the more the resin ones because the I'm still trying to break down the alcohol is really good also at breaking down the cell wall of that mushroom itself. Mm-hmm. So when I took it out of the water, you could still it was little kind of little papery thin corks. Yeah. But by the time I take it out of that alcohol, having hit it with the water and the heat already, and then adding the alcohol to it, it's going to be broken down even more. So I'm really getting good osmosis there. Yeah. I just didn't, I visually didn't understand that and how that would do it. Oh, so okay. That's what, yeah. Right. Like, this doesn't make sense. It's a method yeah. for doing a double extraction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Candice did one that I thought was really, really interesting. <laughs> um, black, black cloud fungus, right? Yeah. It's called, um, it's called black fungus or woodier mushroom. And it's oh, used uh-huh. commonly in, in Asian cooking. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's got some anti-tumor, anti-tumor and immuno, immunomodulating properties. It's mm-hmm. really moistening. So it's particularly really good for people who are really dry. So a lot of dry constitution. Mm-hmm. They don't have enough mucus. They have a tendency to have dry lungs, dry coughs. Mm-hmm. Their eyes, eyes get dry. Because smokers. You know. It would be really good for smokers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's the mushroom that I was working with. And <clears throat> I did the... I like to do the um, alcohol extraction first, and then I do the water extraction second, and then I add them together. Right. So I did the perc, and I did a percolation because I can. I have a grinder, so I ground it. So I ground my stuff, did the the um, alcohol, and it came out pink. Like, yeah, like hot pink. pink, like hot pink, like ah! hot pink, definitely yeah. not red. Yeah, it definitely. Was like, I was like, hot "What pink. is that?" She goes, uh-huh. "That's that's that's yeah." What are your fungus? Like, what? I mean, yeah. I would have you know. You always think brown and yeah, brown. Came out pink. exactly. Yeah, pink. you know. So yeah, you have it was a brown pink. material, the clear alcohol, and the extraction was pink. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. That was yeah. crazy. Yeah. I told Candace to take a picture of it and post it, but I don't know if she did. I took a picture. I don't think I got to posting it. Yet. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. I've been slow. So I did that, and then I did the um, – when the percolation is done, then I take the leftover um, mark, mark mm-hmm. and put that into a crock pot. And then I added – on that one, The normally I add – I start with something – like I'll add like four or five, six times what I originally started with. I'll start with a huge amount of water mm-hmm. with mushrooms because they're so mucilaginous. Now, is this so, the – what were you saying, black cloud – or yeah, this is the, it's, um, what's it called? Auricularis Ooh. polytrica. Auricularis polytrica. And it's used in Asian it. cooking. If you like uh, mushu pork, it's in mushu pork. Yeah, that's the mushroom in mushu pork. Okay. Because I've had it before. I think I've had it at your house. Yeah, you have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah not the have. pork part. No. No, we buy a big, what, five pound bag from the yeah. restaurant yeah. supply store. Yeah, I have a rather large bag, yeah. I'm sorry. So I on this one, it's really mucilaginous. Oh really, yeah. really mucilaginous. Nice. So I it doesn't get that way with the alcohol. And I use a really high alcohol, high percentage, so like seventy five percent alcohol or more usually mm-hmm. when I'm doing it this way. So I really am focusing on getting as much into the alcohol as possible. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to get a ton into the liquid because I'm going to do a decoction soon anyway. Right. So Mm -hmm. I put the mark in the crock pot, filled it up, let it cook. And it got to a nice, lovely brown color, Mm -hmm. you know, sort of a, it's actually like almost like baby poo brown. It's not a great Mm -hmm. looking, like shiitake has a nicer, richer looking brown. Mm -hmm. You know, I expected a better looking brown from this, but you know, hey, it was fine. Baby poo happens, as they say. It happened, it tasted nice and strong. So when I get done with the decoction part of that, I strain it and then I usually concentrate it really strongly. Like with cheesecloth? Um, I put it back, I strain it, I put it back into the crock pot, cleaned crock pot. So it's Mm -hmm. not, no particulates left. Mm -hmm. And then I just let it cook down until it's like, if I started with like two liters of water, I'm going to let it cook down to maybe 500 mil. Mm -hmm. Covered. Covered, but so that it will um, vent. vent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the crock pot will be just enough that I can usually leave it like overnight. 
Mm-hmm. And low. It, yeah, on low or, low or low. Actually, I leave it on high overnight. And really? It'll, and it'll it essentially like simmers down. It doesn't boil, All but right. it, it but the the water evaporates. You can't oversleep because that's a perils of pauline in in mushroom yeah. world. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So I you know get that really nice so it's down and really really strong. And then I'll add some alcohol into it to bring it up to about a forty percent alcohol solution. Okay. So. I've got the original, the tincture, which was 75%, and I've got the decoction, which is now at 40%, and then I mix a an amount of both of those together to turn it into a 60% solution. So my combining of the two mm-hmm. becomes a 60% decoction, or 60% alcohol, and it so it's has... it's well-preserved. Yeah, so it's well-preserved, okay. and then it, and it's got... Some of the alcohol constituents, it'll have a little bit less because that's always the higher alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then the decoction, I usually do that one at 40%. So it's preserved, but it's got more of the water. So I mix the two. It Mm -hmm. comes to 60 with a nice proportion. That makes sense. Sure. Yeah. So So what's the color afterwards? It was more, it was actually, that became a more nice looking brown because it had the red hues back into it. Okay. So or it was russet. Less, yeah. A little bit more russet like. Not yeah. so Barbie pink. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, it was, and then I usually keep some of the original alcohol and some of the original decoction. So I've got, if I wanted, I can use just the alcoholic constituents mm-hmm. or I can focus on just the water constituents. Most of the time I just kind of go broad spectrum and do the. Do you freeze the water one? No, I don't. Hmm. I have no, 40% is one. enough to keep it. It's been. Okay. I mean, so far I've had no problems. Right. <laughs> you know? I know a lot of people kind of like the lower wat, um, lower alcohol for some of these mushrooms because a lot mm-hmm. of them are, there's a lot of water, water soluble. Yeah, there's a lot. And I do that with the shiitake. I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. With the reishi one that I did, I did a cold water extraction as well as a hot water extraction. Mm. And I did the cold. I took did the percolation with the alcohol. Then I did a cold water extraction for I can't remember how long. Honestly, I can't remember how long I extracted it. Mm-hmm. But the water that came out of it smelled and tasted really, so good, yeah. really good. And then I did a hot after yep. that. Yep. Well, for my turkey tail one, I'm going to measure it, see what the alcohol content is right now. Mm-hmm. And then, and if I need to, then I'll, I'll cook it down a little bit Yeah, before straining it. Makes sense. Because you can, you can, it's, you can kind of strain it while you're checking it. Yeah. The first shiitake I did was like, wait, kind of like I did it the way that you did. Mm-hmm. And it turned out really well. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah. pretty happy with it. I was just so discouraged at that the bottle, uh turkey tail tincture that was purchased yeah. was so bleh and maybe that was mycelium tincture could that be, they were yeah. using maybe so i i yeah, don't know that was, was just i was very very dismayed because oh, somebody's paying like 18 bucks yeah maybe more maybe 12 for this right? bottle of i don't know what yeah and this is you know people using turkey tails for for cancer. For cancer. Most of the time, that's what people are. stuff or yeah. hepatitis or yeah. you know, HIV-1 or yeah. one of those. Yeah. No, don't be messing around with that stuff. I think right? it's almost like the yeah. difference between getting, you know, mass-produced stuff versus artisanal, you know. So yeah. artisanal, oh, here. you know, yeah. tinctures, you know. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, he did say that there up until even a few years ago and even now, the, the governing body that controls that stuff – really hasn't changed the the policies just right. the wording yeah so even though you think you're getting you know this this potent medicine it you you may you not may if or it may ta- not be here's a, here's a good rule of thumb people if it tastes good it's probably not what you're looking for yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. i mean i can't say because, that because i'm sorry because you had said yeah. that um was it uh, a mushroom during that podcast that you tasted it and it's like yeah. So it bitter. Tastes, so yeah. bitter, yeah. So bitter. And then yeah. he was talking about people like, oh, here, it tastes, it tastes really good. It's not supposed to be yeah. sweet. It's not yeah. supposed to be. I mean, it should have a really effective t- flavor to it. Yep. Yeah. You know, it definitely. should be something that you don't want to just squirt in your mouth over and over and over again. It should be something where you know yeah. you're taking something that's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because so, it's powerful medicine. Right. Yeah. If the mushroom is one that's typically used in food, like shiitake or woodier fungus mm-hmm. or wood black fungus, like the ones that we were talking about. 
those will taste good and they'll taste really strongly of whatever the mushroom is. Mm-hmm. They're unmistakable. Maytake or lion's yeah. mane. Or, yeah. But still, it sounds but if distinctive. You're, yeah, it's distinctive and it's very strong. It's the kind of flavor that you're like, oh, a couple drops is okay, but a whole you know, dropper full well, will taste like much. too much yeah. for most people. Mm-hmm. And like the shiitakes that I've made, those ones always come out with this really strong salty flavor to them. Hmm. They are always strongly salty. You're almost like, well, the cook put too much salt in the soup today. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of ridiculously salty flavor. You have to say it in a California accent. Mm-hmm. You know, I think maybe you know. the reason why maybe shiitake is used quite a bit is because it has, oh. and I don't want to use this word, umami flavor. It oh, does. Yeah. No, that's so, a good flavor. You know, so it might, yeah. might put that in. And when you concentrate it like you've been doing, mm-hmm. you're really extracting the salts that are already naturally in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. But if it's a one that's usually touted as a medicinal mushroom, it's probably going to taste bitter and kind of like a chunk of wood. Yeah. Now, like an like icky. It could taste not offensive to you if you need it. Still that is potent. true. That does happen sometimes. Yeah, mean, St. John's wort, when I have a bad back, tastes good. Yeah. And then when yeah. my back, the sciatica is gone, then right. it's like, oh, uh, oh the most yeah. delicious battery acid ever. Right. You know? So yes. it could be, you know, and I'm not suggesting that that yeah, makes true. The, the, you know, a sweet tasting tincture, right? It does uh, not. I'm just it will saying not that, be sweet and bland. Yeah, right. So okay. I'm just saying that, you know, Maybe it becomes more tolerable if if you need it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but like, you should taste that. You yeah, should be able to. You, you taste should you should know that. that. Should I mean, because there's sometimes where Candace will make one up for me, and and I'll take it, and I'm like, oh, this actually is not too bad. She goes, oh, really? God, that's horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hideous medicine. I'm yeah. glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. It's working for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's um, very true. But it should have a distinctive flavor. Yeah. Or it or what it what. Or maybe you're, it's like a homeopathic dose. I don't, I don't know, but that's not what was on the bottle. Yeah. If, I mean, if it's, if it's meant to be a homeopathic, it should be really obviously yeah, labeled as such. Yeah. And it was not, it was not. So yeah. I was, I was very disappointed. And uh, yeah. I should, I will also say that I was trying it because it was one of the donated ones. So I was like, well, mm. let's see, you know, especially see after listening to Jeff yeah. talk about how the, variety and quality is for a mushroom yeah. tincture. It's like, well, I'm not giving this to somebody. If yeah. I get more of this particular one, I'm not going to give this to one of my vulnerable patients. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I've I've noticed that there's a variety in all tinctures. I mean, across all the sure. plants, but mm-hmm. the variety and quality across the plant tinctures and common herbs that we've heard, it seems to be much like there's a lot more good stuff out there, mm-hmm. but in the medicinal mushrooms, not as it's much. St- yeah, it's, there's still know. people that are that are jumping in it because they may not understand mushrooms yet, and and I would argue that none of us really understand <laughs> mushrooms yet. Yeah, no, it's such a new science. Yeah, you know, we're yeah. within within my lifetime. I've seen this huge jump in how much we have learned about this, and and that's probably true for many of the herbals, but we don't have is we don't really have a long standing tradition of making tinctures from mushrooms right yeah and i mean for me I, the ones that i'm most interested in honestly are the ones that aren't really being studied because they're just considered oh that's food mm-hmm. and i'm like well that may be food but those are the ones that are really calling for me mm-hmm. and i have yeah, a feeling and when we do like the little bit that they've done with the wood ear fungus they're finding that it's got some pretty strong properties mm-hmm. so i'm like well sure. yeah there's a reason why we've been eating it for so long mm-hmm. and why not turn it into medicine i don't see a reason to not to mm-hmm. and if it's unreasonable in your life to put a bunch of mushrooms into a pot and cook them for soup every day which i can really understand why that might be unreasonable for people Learning how to do a really good tincture with those makes sense. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know? Yeah, the difference between poison and medicine and food is dose. Yeah, exactly. So they, I know with turkey tail, the, one of the few side effects that you got for turkey tail, like you, you probably ate a little too much, as if your fingernails start turning dark. And your <laughs> nice. your poop will start turning dark. Nice. Yeah. So that's a that's that's your little indicator light. That's a good indicator. Yeah. Yeah. But for people that, you know, they're coming off of chemo or something like that, then yeah. that's not not an issue. Yeah, not worried <laughs> like, about that. Whatever. Yeah. I, don't yeah. care. I still have fingernails. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
there's things yeah. to watch out for. And oyster mushrooms are delicious. Oh, God, I and love those. lots of medicinal yeah. qualities. So Yeah, those I think might be next on my list of ones to look oyster. at seriously for tinctureing and it. stuff. Well, I want that's to. one of the ones I really that, want that to. you can buy in the grocery. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, and just, a, yeah, all year round, pretty much. It's not even. Yeah, because you can grow you it. Can yeah, grow you can it. grow that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We're lucky here in our grocery stores that a lot of the wild mushrooms that can't be propagated appear yeah. fresh during the season. Yeah. Um, which is kind of exciting to walk into, like, a, yeah. you know, one of the market of choices or whatever, and go, oh, look at that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Yeah. I really, what I really want to do, I'm hoping maybe this year I'll get lucky, is I want to find a large enough stash of chanterelles that I can dry them and try making tincture with those because I think those would be really good. Hmm. And then I really want to get my hands on the um, fly agaricus was the proper name for that. Oh, the amanita? Amanita, yeah. I've seen so many of them. Last year we went out looking for them and there was nothing. I couldn't find them anywhere. And you want to find them, they're not there. Yeah, I was really frustrated. Yeah. Well, last Last, Last year, year was, was a really, tough mushroom season. It was a yeah. really tough one. Yeah. The fires and all, all yeah. the things. Yeah. So this year I'm really, really hoping for some some of those. What are you going to be using that for? And I know there's a big fight about fly garrick. I know for Amanita is like, it's poisonous. No, it's not. You're poisonous. Your mother's poisonous. Like, there's uh-huh. a big battle about that. Oh, I think it probably is poisonous. I'm guessing it is. So what are you going to make the tincture? Well, the mushroom itself is I'm not going to make... I might make it... Hallucinogenic. I'm interested in some Mm -hmm. tincture, but I'm also interested... I'm interested in... Yeah, she's Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Sue's right again. I'm interested We're talking about the red mushroom with the mushroom. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's why it's always pictured in all the pictures with the fairies. Let me put that on my list. Pictures, yeah. (laughs) But that's not why I want it. I'm interested in tincturing potentially as a liniment, but I'm interested in topical application because from what I have understood from everything I've heard, it's a really potent pain reliever. Oh, sure it would be. I'm really, really interested in doing some topicals with that. Right. I was thinking some of the turkey tail I was making. I'm glad you talk about topicals Mm -hmm. because... Uh, turkey tail is one of those great ones for people with eczema. Oh, interesting. So turning that, and we, we get that. Yeah. You know, of course we do. Yeah. So I was thinking, well, you know, you couple that with some vitamin D, mm-hmm. maybe or a couple, you know, add some white willow to it and a couple yeah. of other things. Man, we could have ourselves some pretty nice eczema, a solemn seal. Yeah. Uh, a good a good liniment. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I am glad. You know, one thing we do need on our website mm-hmm. is a liniment, how to de- do it yourself. Yeah. Liniment sounds like such a, an deal. old... Old lady thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it that way, but Kinda I always say your grandma, get the liniment get the out, liniment. get the liniment, you know. Yeah, well, they knew yeah. what they were doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> do, do Is it known by another name now? I don't uh, know. What is a liniment? Define. Uh, It's a... Go. Well, okay. Usually it's a compound that you're putting on you that doesn't have oil in it. It absorbs very quickly. So easily absorbed, topical. It can have a variety of different things, either witch hazel or alcohol or I've seen a but it's on, but it's non-oily, off. no okay. wax. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't, I didn't know. Topical which use. is funny because I would no. think liniment would be something that would last. So you, know. you put it on there and it goes... Car. Yeah, makes soaks in fast. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it, there's some good stuff there in liniment land, and I think that's one of those things that's not as trendy. Yeah, like, right now it's not anyway. Right. I mean, but wait, we're done with it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I I think it's a nice thing if you don't have uh, open wounds. It's really great for that sore yeah. muscle liniment. It's yeah, a basic one. Yeah. Oh, well, and if, if you happen to also have oily skin in general, so that you don't really want to apply more oil to your right. skin. Right. Sure. So there's a lot of people that have just naturally have more oily skin, mm-hmm. and that's not the, the kind of person who really needs extra oil mm-hmm. <laughs> of any sort. And that's a, that's the turkey tail liniment you were saying. I was saying I was saying I put together a turkey tail liniment because oh, okay. it does any of those immunomodulators. It, we could give that to somebody with eczema, and they would have some good success. So there's a hmm. lot of, of, of uh, mm-hmm. but I was thinking my turkey tail part of the thing that I was going to make with it is mm-hmm. uh, a liniment, like a topical, but you put Makes liniment sense. in my head. So therefore it shall be. 
All right. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So there's a lot to choose from. Have you got any other tinctures that you, mushroom tinctures or mushroom magic that you've got going? The three big ones that I've done lately have been the the shiitake, the black fungus, and the and I did the reishi recently. I've been using reishi with shiitake and usnia as a restorative, and I've been really impressed with how well it seems to be working. Mm. Um, For what? After like chronic, essentially adrenal fatigue. After oh. recovery from that, you can't use it at the very beginning because reishi is too strong. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, it's just much too strong for, in my opinion, for that level of weakness. But so but you, you get to a point where you've rebuilt enough where reishi starts to really make a lot of sense. Okay. So you just gave yeah. it some building blocks and then you yeah. give it reishi. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of people talk about reishi as being almost like a panacea. You just use it for everything. And yeah, they talk I don't about panaceas. So yeah. would you give it people like a bunch of nutritive herbs first yes. as the building blocks yeah. and then you give yeah. them reishi? Okay. Yeah. All right. Start building with when you're that debilitated. Make the Legos. Yeah. When you're that debilitated, your system is is beyond being able to handle strong medicines. You have to go with the food-like stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, and nettle and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Stuff that your body can easily assimilate without being overwhelmed, especially if you're looking at someone who's nervous system is like they're getting into anxiety and panic attacks and struggling with depression and coming you know, off of addiction. Yep. Coming off of addiction mm -hmm. or you know, coming out of an abuse situation. Yes. The kind of people who are easily overstimulated, mm -hmm. like the things that most they're gun shy. Yeah. The most normal people would consider that like knock on the door to be no big deal, mm -hmm. but you know, someone who's really been, yeah, yeah. they just, they, get some, yeah, they act very startled by, attack. Exactly. Sure, I get you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. So folks like that, they often have a lot of insomnia. Mm -hmm. That's probably usually a really big struggle. When you're in that kind of level of weakness, reishi is too powerful. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help you. It's going to end up just over buzzing your system. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that seems in my opinion, in my experience, that seems to be the case with a lot of adaptogenetic a lot of herbs that are called adaptogens mm. when system. And I saw that I saw a presentation from Paul Bergner on that. And I've heard him speak very briefly about it as well. And mm -hmm. I kind of agree with him that, you know, you have to be intelligent about using adaptogens. They aren't just for every possible case. Yeah. There's a point at which the system's too weak and they're not going to be helpful. They're going to be hindersome. Yeah. Well, we run into that at clinic too, where people yeah. come in and they they're just they're man they are they are scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're barely mm -hmm. able to survive, and they come in and then they get help, and then you know the herbs help them out, and then they come in and they next time they say, okay, I want all of the things you mm -hmm. gave me this to help me. Now I want all what I'm seeing on the walls. Just give them. I want yeah. maca. I want bib. I want that. I want all the things. Yeah. Like, no, 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 sweetie. <laughs> Yes, time. It takes time. Is, would you do that if you went to a pharmacy? Right. Oh, this this antibiotic just Look. knocked my bacteria uh, out of my system. So now I want all of the drugs. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, <laughs> no. not very healthy. So <laughs> right, right tool, right place. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that people have that disconnect between pharmacological and herbal. Yep. And yeah, they, and they think that oh, because it's it's a plan because it's a plan it can do no harm. It can do no harm, right? Yeah, and, and they they don't realize that a vast majority of our, of our pharmacology is comes from comes plants. From yes, plants. exactly. You know, mm -hmm. and so that yeah. person, it's just that's the it's not the first person that I've heard just you know give me all of it. Give, give it. I'll just fill up my cart. And, and I can eat that. Well, no, it's right. an herb, so it's safe. No, no. there's really <laughs> not. A, I mean, yeah. I know I'll get we'll get in trouble for this, but. But on a metaphorical way of saying it, the pharmacist knows about those pharmacological mm -hmm. um, medicines. The herbalist knows about the herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. And so they have a very much a parallel or partner task or job to handle to help you as the person that needs it to be able to help you get what you need. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I I know there's a lot of herbalists out there that seem like their main job is to be uh, apothecarist, yeah. to be the herbal pharmacist. 
And I, yeah. I also recall we've had a few um, in the herbs in the news um, where I'm thinking specifically of the woman that got turmeric um, uh, the injections. injections. Yeah. Yeah. And it killed her. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can't just across the board say, oh, well, herbs are fine. And so it's good in every single situation. Right. You know, yeah. that's just not true. So yeah. you, you have to give respect to these plants. Wow. And respect to your own body and respect to the knowledge that it takes to properly apply these wonderful plants and yeah. and fungi mm-hmm. and algae and all that. But it, it takes a lot of learning. You can't be lazy about it. No, that is constant learning. Yep. So, yeah. Well. So are we at the end of our show? We're at the end of our you show. Just decided. Just decided. decided. Just decided. Okay. So if Possibly you like the show said. or this show or any other show that we do, make sure to review us. We'd love to get some reviews on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever else you get this podcast. Yeah, give us a review. That helps other people make the decision on whether or not they're going to subscribe. Mm-hmm. I know that when I'm looking at podcasts, I listen to reviews of them. I also read an occasional review. Makes it makes a decision before I hit that subscribe button because now it's going to be downloaded on my device and it's going to be taking up space. Yeah. yeah, and then when it gets on my playlist, then I have to listen Space to it. Space on your device is a pre- at a premium. So, it's at a premium. Yeah. Yes, always. And anybody's device is a premium. If they have, if you commit, if someone commits to adding your app or your download or your podcast to their device, then you've made it. Yeah. And I think now, it's particularly important for eclectic podcasts like ours because we don't just. It's not just this or this week. You know, we can be talking yeah. to people about bees, or we can be talking about permaculture we can be talking about there's a vast variety of things we'll talk about so someone gets on there and like they listen they say oh well i'm not really into coffee so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna listen to another one of these but you look at the review shame when they don't do that because they want to get this podcast on herb on mushrooms which is their favorite right right? which is their favorite favorite. but if you look at the reviews reviews you say oh you know they have an eclectic group okay well i'll listen to a couple more and then i'll get a real flavor for it yeah. Cool. So yes, please review us. And uh, as always, if you can find us on Facebook, we'd love to have an extra like. And on the on um, Pinterest, uh, we have the Back to Herbalist is there on Pinterest, and we also have an a- hashtag that's called hashtag the Back to Herbalist. You mean Instagram? Oh, I'm sorry, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I was looking at you going Pinterest. Pinterest. I mean, they I know, all, you know they all start to blend together. We have, yeah, we they, have a Pinterest thing, but yeah, we I haven't do. looked at. We it do have a Pinterest account, a Pinterest so thing. you can you can yeah. you can tag us there too. But on Instagram. It's hashtag the practical herbalist. So if you're doing anything um, with herbs and mushrooms and have some cool pictures, um, share them with the community, share them with us. And uh, as always, put an herb herb on on it. it. The statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided on this podcast or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions, or case studies are based on individual results and do not constitute a guarantee that you will achieve the same results.